I'm gonna do something for you. Nobody ever did for me. I wanna give you a second chance. Copland was supposed to be Sylvester Stallone's big comeback movie. Despite earning decent box office and generating Sly's best reviews in decades, it seemed to actually be the final nail in his coffin as far as beating a leading man goes, and I don't understand why. How do you think this looks? Go on, Freddy. Before Copland, Stallone was headlining huge action movies like Daylight and Judge Dredd, and while they underperformed domestically, overseas they were still pretty big. Holy one would think that Stallone would have been given an old-school action film to revive his career. After all, it had worked in the past with Cliffhanger and Demolition Man. Let's go blow this guy. Away. Blow this guy away. But all of a sudden, he was slotted into cheap movies, such as the slasher thriller Detox, which is also called ICU. And no, not I as in the letter and C as in the letter and U as in the letter. No, I as in... I having an I, seeing C, and then you, as in you and me. I see you. What a terrible, terrible title. I see you, but you don't see me. That movie was so bad that it wound up going direct-to-video, which pretty much meant the end of Stallone's career for a good half-dozen years, until he managed a major comeback with Rocky Balboa. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. But it would get pretty dire for Sly in that intervening period, but Warner Brothers did produce two movies they gave theatrical releases to in 2000 and 2001, and both movies would be huge, huge flops, with Driven widely considered one of Stallone's worst film ever. But Get Carter, which came up before Driven, is actually a bit underrated. It's a remake of the classic Michael Caine gangster movie of the same name. We should stop right there because even if Get Carter at the time was mostly unknown in North America, in the UK the film was considered a stone-cold classic. Are you coming in or are you going to piss about all day? You're bloody finished! You know that, Jack! i bloody finished you! Not till I'm dead, Eric. Thus, the knives were out for this one before it ever even hit theaters, and critics, it must be said, were seemingly looking to take Sly down a few more notches. <laughs> What do you want to do, boy? What do you want? Come on, cowboy. You want to get a rep? Come on. Take your best chance. Get a rep. Come on. Come on, shoot. You got the stuff. Doing a remake was exactly the wrong thing for his career at the time, but the movie actually ain't half bad. It's interesting watching Get Carter in the wake of Stallone's success on Tulsa King, where he plays a gangster, because in that show he sports the same look that he does here in Get Carter. In it, he plays a mob enforcer who's in trouble with his boss, Tom Sizemore, in a voice cameo. Which part of I can't let you go? Did you not under fucking stand? Jack, this is your job. This is not a frickin' charity case. You do your job. Because he's been seeing his mistress, Audrey, played by Gresham Wall in, you guessed it, another cameo, behind his back. While he should be laying low, he discovers that his brother has died in a car accident, and he returns to his old Seattle stopping grounds and discovers that his late brother was in fact murdered. Your brother Richard's name was mentioned? Cyrus goes out with some very bad guys. And when he comes back, your brother's gone. It turns out that his brother's daughter, Doreen, played by Rachel Lee Cook, who was just coming off of She's All That at the time, was drugged and raped and used against her will in a porn flick, and that when the brother tried to expose them, he was killed. Sly's Carter unleashes a world of hurt on the bad guys, and while the film is more of a serious noir-style drama than an action flick, as a sly aficionado back in 2000, I remember thinking it was a pretty cool movie. So now I gotta make it right. I gotta do that. I mean, what would you do if it was your daughter? Nowadays, Get Carter holds up fairly well as a time capsule, with it very evocative of the kind of late 90s crime movies that were hip in the wake of Reservoir Dogs. God damn you, Joe. Don't make me do this. Larry, stop pointing that fucking gun at my dad! Well, it ain't Tarantino. It fits in well alongside other examples of the genre, like Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, Suicide Kings, and The Way of the Gun. Director Stephen Kay, who later became a mainstay of Taylor Sheridan shows, directs this with a lot of style. Too much, perhaps. 
as you can really tell this is someone's first big studio movie and that they're showing off a bit. While people mocked that aspect of the film back in 2000, now it's kind of endearing, making the movie feel like a fun retro thriller with the soundtrack especially evocative of the era, with songs by Moby and Paul Oakenfold. It was also composer Tyler Bates' first big film, and he does a terrific job on the score, riffing on the original Get Carter theme song by Roy Budd. Another strong thing about Get Carter is the cast, with Miranda Richardson, Alan Cumming, and Rachel Lee Cook pretty prestigious at the time, while co-star Rona Mitra soon became an object of lust for a lot of guys going through their formative years at the time this came out. Something if you lie to me, I'm gonna break every listen to me. I'm gonna break every beautiful bone in your body. What's really special about Get Carter are the two actors they get to play the antagonists. First, there's the original Carter himself, Michael Caine, who they were able to entice to retain with Stallone for the first time since victory. Listen, I don't like hard cases coming in here and talking to me like I know something. If there's someone out there putting out something about me, then I want to know who the hell it is. And when I know what it is and who's been saying it, I might just take the matter up with you, Jack. This was a pretty big coup, as Kane being involved gave the film some legitimacy, and he had just won an Oscar for the Cider House Rules and was in the middle of a huge comeback. Good night, you princes of Maine. You kings of New England. The other really cool piece of casting was Mickey Rourke. At the time, Rourke's career was in the gutter, with him being mocked as box office poison, and being known more for being tabloid fodder than an actor. You got my, my deepest condolences and all that shit. Stallone had a soft spot for Rourke, who would later show up in the first Expendables movie when his career was doing much, much better having been nominated for an Oscar for The Wrestler. The two of them actually have a great fight scene where, for a good while, Rourke beats the absolute piss out of Stallone before the Italian stallion turns the tables, as happens in most of Sly's movies. All that said, it can't be denied that Get Carter is ultimately a pretty unnecessary film, with the 1971 Get Carter still great. The movie also suffers from a ludicrously reshot ending where Stallone, minus his goatee that he's been sporting the entire film, comforts Lee Cook's character, ending the film on an up note that runs contrary to the rest of the film. I like the new look. Nevertheless, this is still pretty decent stuff, although audiences at the time were not impressed, with it being saddled with a deadly D-plus cinema score rating. It only made $14 million domestically and was barely released in Europe, meaning Sly's power as a foreign draw was all but gone. It did irreparable harm to his status as a leading man, but he wasn't alone in this regard, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and Steven Seagal all suffering major downturns in their popularity at the time, with JCPD and Seagal consigned to the DTV market for good. Only Sly and Arnold were ever able to fight their way back to the big screen, but that's a story for another time. You caught her? That's right. And you really don't want to know me. <laughs>